Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Seven Show. Uh, what are we doing today? We're doing two videos. I was going to do one video, but I thought it might get a little long, and uh, um, I have a tendency to blather on, and so it would get even longer. <laughs> and these are kind of two separate subjects. They, they work hand in hand, but I thought it might be better if I just break them out. So what are these two subjects? So the first is I want to do the movie mic technique to measure my, my monitor responses in this space. In the past, I've set the mic in stationary positions. You kind of move it around your listening point. Take 20 or whatever shots of the room using a frequency sweep of 20 to 20,000 hertz. You have all of those shots. You compile them together into an average and you can do this in Room EQ Wizard. And that gives you sort of a general idea of what your monitor, monitors are doing in the space. So the moving mic technique is basically the same thing, but instead of doing a frequency sweep, you're doing a full range pink noise. So it's 20 to 20,000 hertz of, of noise. You're taking the mic and you're kind of waving it around in the room. And as you're doing that, it's taking samples of what it can hear. So in a minute or so, you can end up with about a hundred samples of this space. So it's a lot more, it's probably a lot more accurate um, than putting your, well, it takes a lot less time too than putting your microphone a hundred different places in the room and doing a sweep for every single one of them. So I had never done the movie My Technique. So last night I was in here uh, for hours getting it figured out doing comparisons between my averages and the response I'm getting on the movie mic technique, and they're virtually identical. Um, they're pretty darn close. And the amount of time that I, I save doing the mic technique will actually be uh, uh, greatly appreciated uh, in my brain. <laughs> so um, I've got to figure it out. That's what this video is. We're going to do that. I'm actually going to shoot uh, the, the Cali monitors I'm going to do my old style of doing it. We'll average it. I'll show you those results and then we'll do the moving mic technique. And, uh, uh, yeah. So I think that, yeah, that's the first video. Second video real quick. Uh, once you have those measurements, you want to do corrections on your monitors in the room that they're sitting in. Not all monitors are going to be perfectly flat. Even when you get into the really, really high end ones that they're, they're going to be closer, but, we're talking about sub $1,000 speakers. So um, it, it's helpful to do a little finesse and finagling on your curves. The atoms go through a rack mount EQ. And so it goes from the source to the EQ to the atoms. On the EQ, I make some minor adjustments. I, I pull a little bit down around like 200 hertz. Uh, just a little sweep down at 200 and then somewhere around 3000, there's a little bit of a bump there, but it really isn't very much. And I do that and my response of the monitors come out much flatter. So that's awesome, but it's, it's a hardware EQ. It's taking up space in the rack. I have bumped it in the past and screwed up those EQ settings. And then my mixes come out sideways and I don't realize it until later until I listen to the mix somewhere else and go, why is the high end on this one side really bad? And I look at the EQ, it's like, oh, I bumped it. Okay. So there's a product called mini DSP. It's uh, just this little box. There's an input, there's an output. And in here is a little uh, digital signal processing. You can set EQ points with a little configuration file. You can make that a configuration file in Room EQ Wizard. Upload it to this, um, detach it from the computer, power it up, and there's nothing to bump. There's no little slider to screw up. It'll just hold that information until you replace it. It does other things. It has uh, some crossover points. So these are really cool for um, subwoofers. You can set your, your crossover point so that your subwoofer doesn't get anything above wherever you want to set it. Um, there are some ins and outs mixes. It does all kinds of different things. We're going to use the EQ processing on the outgoing. There's an EQ processing on the incoming as well. 
This allows me to set six EQ points. I probably won't need them all because the Callies are pretty close. There's a little mid-rangey thing going on, and that's what I want to focus on. And then I want to make sure that the low end is nice and smooth. So that'll be the second video is making those correction files based on what we get today or in this video, upload it to this, and then we'll, we'll do a measurement of the monitors just to make sure that our corrections work. Great, so let's start with doing the measurements with this. I'm actually using a new measurement mic today. I picked up, since I was ordering from Mini DSP, they actually make a microphone called the U-Mic 1, they make a U-Mic 2 and some other reference mics. It's USB powered and I'm, I'm pretty happy with my other reference mic, but it's XLR connector, which means as you're waving it around, you can bump, bump the cable and it'll give you a little bump on the low end or something. So this is USB powered, so I don't have to worry about the cable. So they're cheap, they're like 80 bucks US. So I figured I might as well get it uh, and we'll, we'll give it a shot. So the, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a stationary uh, frequency sweep in the room. Um, I'll probably do, I don't know, eight or 10 of them. I'm not gonna go overboard with it. We'll average those together. I'm not gonna film that, you don't need to see that. Then we'll, I'll, I'll turn this camera back on and we'll go through the process of doing the moving mic technique. And then we'll compare the results of that over my averaged results, just to show you that they come out about the same. Okay, so let's shoot uh, the frequency response using the moving mic technique. What I'm gonna do is I, when I took my standalone readings, I have some places marked on the floor which you probably can't see. I have center, uh, right and left. I shot um, basically five positions here, a couple positions here, three positions here, and three positions over here. Um, so that put my microphone like right about here where my head would be, forward if I'm leaning forward, about here, 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 something like that, right? So that's what I want to do with my microphone is I want to be in this zone that my ear holes are going to be when I'm listening to these monitors. Now I'm not worried about extremes like coming all the way over here, uh, mostly because this is kind of where I'm going to be sitting and focusing. So that's, that's where I'm going to mostly wave my mic around. I'm, I'm using a calibration file for my microphone like this, so I'm not going to hold it like this. They, these UMUX come with both. They come with a calibration if you're doing it directly or if you're doing it 90. So uh, I'm just using that file. So that's why I'm holding it like this. All right, so let's start. We'll go over the settings when I'm done. Uh, here we go. I'm going to save that. We'll do a second one just for fun. Great, let's go look at it. Okay, let's take a look at the measurements that I took. So there were uh, 11 in all. Uh, normally I do a few more than that, but I just wanted to speed this along. And for what I'm demonstrating, it's gonna be good enough. So we have all these labeled left, center, left, right, whatever. 
You can see this one here, left, I've got it marked as left, left, two. So this is the left speaker on the left side uh, because I have the plus on it. That means that I moved it forward a foot uh, and it's in position two. So that means that it's over a little bit to the right. They, they make sense to me. It doesn't have to make sense to you, but that's just how I track this. Uh, you can see it's a little, it's the loudest one because it was one of the closest measurements I took to the speaker. Um, the quietest one would be um, left, right, negative, this one. So that's on the right hand side, back a foot. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit quieter. So you, to do an average, you highlight everything that you want to make an average of, and you click this little average the responses button and it will give you an average. Now I've already done that, uh, so let's look at it. Just unhighlight all of these. Doot, 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 doot. And here's my average of all of those uh, 11 measurements. So let's look at what kind of curve we get by waving the mic around like an idiot. So that's this is the first one that I did. And then this is the second one that I did. And you can see that they're pretty dead on. There's, you know, some slight variations, but um, if, if you've done any of these measurements before, you can take a measurement and then you can move the mic like just a fraction and you'll get, uh, you'll get different readings like this. So it's close enough, close enough for what we're doing. But you see the curve follows. So... I save a bunch of time just by waving a mic around like a fool, uh, rather than putting it in a whole bunch of positions like a fool. <laughs> so that's great. That gives us a curve that uh, we can work with on this. This is about what I would say our middle line is, so we could bump this up a little bit here, and we can pull these down a little bit here. We'll cover that in the next video. Okay, so you've seen what we can do. Let me go over the settings that I've got so that you can set up Room EQ Wizard to do this yourself. The version that I'm using is uh, 5.19, just uh, in case you're, and I'm on Windows, so in case the things look a little bit different, that might be why, um, but they're going to be about the same. So to get into this, this is the uh, listed on your buttons on the top of Room EQ Wizard. This is RTA real-time analysis. We can go into the settings. So I'm doing for mode, I'm doing real-time analysis uh, 124th octave. Um, for the FFT length is 16K. Averages are forever. Window is Han. Max overlap 50%. Uh, update interval one, and then I've got these high pass and low passes turned off. And then I have adjust RTA levels, and that brings my graph up to about where the, if I, if I disable that, uh, it'll bring it in a little bit lower. But this will bring it to, it'll bring our graphs about similar. The pink noise that I'm using, pink noise, full range, uh, we don't want to use it. I think it defaults to speaker calibration. So do it full range. This is the level of the noise that's coming out. So you can turn this up or down. You want it up a little bit louder. Um, not enough to make your ears bleed, but um, a, a bit louder because it'll be, be a bit more accurate. And you see I'm doing the output on the left channel. So I'll do one here real quick. Um without the mic is just sitting over there on the console. Um, but it's kind of interesting to watch as this happens. Um, as the averages, as it takes more snapshots, this will start to smooth out. So we'll turn this on. And we'll start a recording. And see how those are kind of starting to smooth out there a little bit? And then they basically stop moving. So when they when they basically stop wiggling around and they've kind of solidified into their place, then you can stop taking uh, 
taking the recording. Once you're done, you want to hit save and just save your current values okay and that'll move this measurement over to our main uh, Rumi Key Wizard sort of main interface. So those are the settings that I got for that and we won't bother doing that. So I guess I don't have much else to say. I didn't, I didn't cover the settings on Rumi Key Wizard um, because I figure if you already know how to do a reading on Rumi Key Wizard, um, you already know how to set up all of that business. Uh, if, if you want a video on that, uh, leave me a message and I'll make a video on kind of how I've got this all set up and, and configured and everything. Um, but I think that well covers doing the movie mic technique and, and how beneficial it is and how much time you'll save and how much easier it is. It's so easy to just do a really quick, uh, I wish I had known about this a long time ago. <laughs> I just never bothered. But um, yeah, so once you get the, the settings all ready to go, have fun, have, have at it. Um, all right, so that's the end of this video. The next video that I'm going to I'm going to turn my camera off and then I'm just going to hit start again and then we'll shoot the next video. <laughs> we'll, we'll take the information that we have here, we'll move it into mini DSP and then we'll do another reading and see uh, how it works out. Okay, great. Thanks for watching.